let's get into it. We're talking our weekly dynasty values. We love this. It's important to talk about these guys. See what's up because, you know, a lot of people say, hey, man, in season, it's just maintenance. The off season is where the real work happens. False. Because you got to set lineups. You got to make moves. You got to try to do things to make your team better. Nate, who's your first trade value you want to talk about? <laughs> All right. So the first guy I got it tonight. Just coming off a huge game, wide receiver one actually on uh, week 13, Jerry Judy, wide receiver of the Cleveland Browns, having a renaissance on his new team. Uh, in fact, had the best revenge game of all time um, against the Broncos on Monday Night Football. Went for nine receptions, 235 yards, and a touchdown. And since week eight, when Jameis Winston took over for the Browns at quarterback, he leads all wide receivers in receiving yards, despite having a bye during that time as well. So Jerry Judy looks like a completely different receiver with Jameis Winston throwing him the ball. Right now, he's wide receiver 14 on the season, averaging 13.7 points per game. What are we doing with Jerry Judy? Because, hey, we scouted him when he came out of Alabama. We were both big fans of him. I remember the discourse back then in the offseason. It was, hey, is C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy the wide receiver one? And a lot of people had him ranked. 1A and 1B. I mean, Jerry Judy was a really good prospect coming out of college, a great route runner, great hands, even though he struggled with drops early in his NFL career. So it's great to see him finally having that, you know, breakout that we expected from him. Uh, is it going to last, though? That's the question. Well, let's look at the trade values and see if it's worth buying into him or maybe he's a sell right now coming off this big performance. Second round pick. Straight up. This really happened. Was this recent within a few days ago? Yeah. This was after that game? After the game. I mean, look, if someone's like, hey, you could have Jerry Judy for a second round pick, and be like, sold. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Well, here, let, you know what? I'll save the YouTube commenters the trouble. That's not getting done in any of my leagues. Well, guess what? This is courtesy of Dynasty Daddy for Nate's trade. So sure. it happened in someone's leagues. I will pay that. Yes. It sure did. I would absolutely too. Would you pay a first, though? I, I think if I was, if I think I could win it all right now with the way Jameis Winston's playing, with the way Jerry Judy is, Judy is playing with him, yes, I would. I I agree, especially because Jerry Judy, um, I believe, only twenty five years old still. Uh, he came into the league young, so I'm 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 in on Jerry Judy and have been First for a round while. Pick for Jerry Judy and three dollars fab. Let's get it done. There we go. All right, the next one I got here, uh, Jerry Judy and Jameis. So you get in the two of them. I saw this trade go down. On Dynasty Daddy. I, I did not make this up. Two second round picks for yeah. Jerry Judy and Jameis Winston. It's a nice little stack to have there. You know what I mean? You know, if Jameis Winston could ever stop the turnovers, he he would get a nice contract from a team. For real. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would do that. Yeah, and I, and I agree that with the YouTube comments that would be hearing this right now. It's too cheap. Way too cheap. But, Mike, would you do a first and a second for Jameis Winston and Jerry Judy? If I'm pushing... For a uh, you know a championship, yeah, especially with this week fourteen, yep. there's a lot of good players on by. Yeah, I would sure. consider it. All right, and then another straight up swap here. We got Russell Wilson for Jerry Judy. Russell Wilson, that's an interesting one. I'm looking up right now. Just threw for what four hundred yards against the uh, Bengals. Where is Russell Wilson on the season? Hmm, that's a very good question. I'm um, gonna guess like quarterback 16, 17. Uh, you would be wrong. 16 is Justin Herbert. 17 is Jordan Love, believe it or not. Russell Wilson, I don't know why I'm not. He did miss a couple games at the beginning of the season. Yeah, so he's down there a little bit. I wanted to look for his fantasy points per game, but uh, that's besides the point. Um, why can't you find it, Mike? You just go to the quarterbacks. I'm going to go to the 17.8 fantasy points per uh, game. My man is quarterback 31. Which is just crazy. Uh, because he's only played six games, so True. that's um, why. If I if I have enough quarterbacks to make it through, and Russell Wilson's kind of like an extra, my third, my best third or fourth quarterback. Some people have a lot of quarterbacks super flex, then yeah. Um, but that is a, a premium position, the quarterback in a super flex league. So that's team dependent, but I don't hate the trade. All right. I, I'm I'm good with it. But Mike, listen to this. You're gonna love this. Russell Wilson averaging 17.8 points per game, which is good for quarterback 12 in points per game, tied with Patrick Mahomes. Interesting. Patrick Mahomes not having the best season this year. No. Russell Wilson's also above in points per game. Kyler Murray, Jared Goff, Caleb Williams, Justin Herbert. A lot of guys. Interesting. Nate, would you like to talk about another standout wide receiver? That is Cincinnati Absolutely. Bengals wide receiver Jamar Chase. Look, there's not much that needs to be said. He continues to be late. He's already over 1,000 yards on the season. He has 1,142 yards. He's already matched his career high in receiving touchdowns with 13. 
we still have a couple weeks left to go here. He's currently leading the NFL in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. He's wide receiver one on the season. He's averaging more than Russell Wilson, <laughs> 22.7 fantasy points per game. Yeah, he's going crazy. And this is why I wanted to put him on here because sometimes when we're looking at values, you know, a player like this is going to help you win now and keep winning for the next few years. What does it cost to get Jamar Chase? Mm -hmm. Drake London, a 25 first, 25 second, and 25 third. Love this deal. Yeah, you would do that? Oh, yeah. You, you don't feel like that's an overpay at all? No. Three no. picks in Drake London? No. Uh, if it was like, you know, if there was another first in there that was giving away two first plus Drake London, I think that's where I start to be hesitant. I yeah. think once you get to three firsts plus value, um, I don't know if any player is really worth that. You know, we just had discussions in the past, you know, is Justin Jefferson worth that? You know, to like two seasons ago, we talked about it. You know, once you get to three first round picks of value, you're, you're kind of capping out on, is it worth it to really make that trade? Um, with this, we're close to that, certainly, because Drake London is worth more than just a straight up 25 first. Um, we're definitely close to that, but... I'm, I'm upgrading to Jamar Chase. And, you know, you're looking at the wide receiver position. And Drake London's having a great season. I'm not going to say I've ever taken away anything from Drake London because I just told it like it was. Uh, but I'm not taking anything away from Drake London this year. He is wide receiver six in the season. But between him and Jamar Chase is 7.3 points per game. Yeah. Drake London, 15.4. Uh, the next one, Rasheed Rice, Roma Dunze, and a 25 first. For Jamar Chase now, obviously Rasheed Rice not helping this year could be a slow start next year. We don't know what that ACL, but then we got Roma Dunze and a 25 first. What do you think about this one, Nate? I'm pretty good with this either way. I think um, this is kind of two teams going two different directions. If you're trying to rebuild, you need assets like you have Jamar Chase and a bunch of crap. I think this is a reasonable trade to trade away Jamar Chase. Um, you get two wide receivers that you know, you know Rashi Rice. You've seen what he can do, and he's on a great team. Um, you got Roma Dunze, who we believe he's a great prospect. Um, he was a great prospect. We believe he's going to be a good wide receiver. He's already had two games over 100 yards in his rookie season. Um, and Keenan Allen's not going to be there next year. And then the first round pick. So I'm, I'm good with this if you're a rebuilding team to move Jamar Chase for this. But I'm also good with it if you're a contending team. You know, those guys aren't helping you right now. Uh, go for the championship. And right now, Jamar Chase is a cheat code. So. Yeah, and like I said, he's going to help you win later, too. Last one. It's a good one. Saquon Barkley for Jamar Chase and a 25 second. Yeah, uh, I'm taking the Chase side here as well. Um, I value Chase over Barkley. Uh, you know, one thing, if you're a contender, you need running back help. Obviously, that might influence how you're going to value those two guys. But still, um, I'm, I'm always going to almost always value Jamar Chase over Barkley. I mean, we, we said Chase is averaging 22.7 points per game. Uh, as good as Saquon Barkley's. Uh, playing this year, he's averaging 23.8. So you are getting a slight advantage in points per game, but 1.1 points per game. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'd, I'd rather have Chase. Nate, who is your next dynasty value? All right. We're going to keep talking about wide receivers. We're going to talk about a wide receiver on the team that Jerry Judy left. We're talking about your guy, Cortland Sutton. All right. Love Cortland him. Sutton, 29 years old, wide receiver seven on the season, averaging 13.9 points per game. So this is, this is an interesting. Um, I already used discourse once tonight, so I don't want to say that again. Um, discussion, even though it's basically like a similar word. Um, you know, Corlin Sutton, wide receiver seven on the season, right? Well, you go by points per game, and all of a sudden, Corlin Sutton is wide receiver 24 on this season. Um, and it's really interesting to look at, you know, these players on a points per game basis, as well as looking at them on overall, because while we also do say the best ability is availability, if I can have a guy that I can plug in my lineup, 10 of the 17 weeks a year who can score 20 points versus a guy that's going to give me 13 um, pretty often. You do have to find a way to value that depending on how your team is set up, how your lineup is set up. So just something to take into account when we're talking about Colton Sun. But he is Bo Nix's wide receiver one. I love Bo Nix. I love what he's doing this year. Some of the throws that he's made down the field has been really, really impressive. I think he's up there uh, top three in the offensive rookie of the year. So do we want Colton Sutton moving forward in the game so far this year? In nine of the 13 games that Colton Sutton has played, he's got at least eight targets. So this is a guy that's been a target hog for the Denver Broncos. He's certainly the wide receiver one, does not have much competition there. You know, Troy Franklin, Marvin Mims have had their flashes, but neither one of them are actually out there pushing uh, Colton Sutton for targets. So until they go, you know, add somebody else, Colton Sutton seems to be, be the guy for, you know, at least the next year or so. So let's look at the trades because, Mike, I'm going to spoil it. 
It's not expensive to go get Cortland Sutton right now. I love this. Trey mm. Tucker and Cedric Tillman. Sold. Tank Dell. Yeah, I like Tank Dell, but I'll take Cortland Sutton. And a second round pick. Deal. All right. All three of them <laughs> down. I, I like Tank Dell too, but I'm taking Cortland Sutton right now. I, I want that. I want that guy. I think things are going to even get better. Bo Nix was a really good end to the fantasy season. Um, defenses that they're playing, they have a good schedule. So I think Cortland Sutton going to be a great guy to help you win your league this year. Next one I got for you is Miami Dolphins tight end Janu Smith. Kind of a signing that everyone's like, eh, when it happened. But yeah. he has had eight or more targets in each of the last three weeks. And they went eight targets, 11 and 11. So there's that. That's always good. He's currently sitting at the second highest touchdown total of his career with four. He had eight in 2020. Could he match it? Maybe. It's possible. There's still time. And he already has his career high in receiving yardage with 648. He had 582 last year with Atlanta. And 58 catches, 648 yards, four touchdowns. And he is tight end five on the season. Yeah. He is right ahead, Nate, of Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz, Dot, and Hunter Henry, and Tucker Kraft rounding out the top 10. What does it cost to get this player? These are trades that happen. My trades courtesy of Fantasy Calc. A 26 third. Yeah, I'm Let's good with that for a competing team. Yeah. Let's I don't know how, I, like, just to be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about John U. Smith on a long term basis. I, I like the Dolphins. You know, I think they have a lot of weapons there. It doesn't really seem like John U. Like, stands out as one of the top weapons on the Dolphins, but he certainly has been over the last couple uh, weeks. And he is signed through next year. So, yeah, something to consider for sure for the long term. But as far as the rest of this year, I mean, you're lucky to have him as your, your tight end. How about this one? Braylon Allen for Johnny Smith and a 25 fourth. If you're competing, I'm, I'm good with the Smith side, but overall I do prefer the Braylon Allen side here. Okay. And last one, a 25 third and a 26 third. So two thirds. No. No, you're only comfortable with the one third. What I'm if it was a... the one third? I mean, I don't hate this. Like if you, if you want to do this deal, I'm not going to be like, oh, that was a bad deal. Um, I probably personally wouldn't make it um, just because I don't. I'm not convinced on the long-term viability of John U. Smith. I, you know, does he end up just kind of going regressing to like being a tight end two on your team? I, I'm just not sold yet, but I'm just, I know that there are people out there that are completely sold on John U. Smith. This is not a lot to pay for him, especially with what he's going to do for the rest of your, your season. So I'm good with someone else making this trade. I'm just probably not personally going to make this trade. Let's talk now about your next dynasty value. Uh, we talked about him a little bit already, but the rookie, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears, Rome Odunze. Mm -hmm. All right. Some people are disappointed in the season that he has had so far. Okay. Wide receiver 54 on the season, 8.6 points per game. The stats so far, 41 receptions, 543 yards, one touchdown. All right. People are disappointed by that. Mike, does this sound familiar? It sure does to me. Okay. JSN, JSN last year through 13 weeks. 45 catches, 468 yards, and two touchdowns. Let me just remind you, Roman Dunze has 41 catches, 543 yards, and one touchdown. JSN was averaging 8.7 points per game. Roman Dunze is averaging 8.6 per game. Interesting. Before the 2023 season, we said, hey, just keep your expectations in check. JSN's behind DK uh, Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. You know, he's, he's the wide receiver three in the team, as good as he is. And it's gonna it's gonna be a slow season for him. It's still gonna be a good season, but it's not gonna be over a thousand yards. And look at JSN this year. You know he's moving ahead of Tyler Lockett, absolutely, and he's been really impressive, a top twelve wide receiver on the season. Now we got Roma Dunze in a very similar situation where before the season we said, hey, temper your expectations. Got Keenan Allen there. You know, fat Keenan Allen is what everyone's calling him in the offseason, but he's still scoring touchdowns out there. Yeah. Uh, he, a ton of targets still. DJ Moore and a, a rookie quarterback, and he's still put up. 500 yards already through week 13. I don't want to hear anyone complaining about Roma Dunze. If you're complaining about his performance so far this year, your expectations were off, not his performance. So let's talk about buying into one of the top three rookie wide receivers coming into this year. Um, Roma Dunze, still a top five guy, absolutely for me. Calvin Ridley and Jake Ferguson for Roma Dunze. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, Jake Ferguson, I believe he's still out. Thank you, Luke Schumacher, for everything you're doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Looking on low Calvin Ridley, too. I 
love this trade. You know, anytime I get a chance to trade away Calvin Ridley, who I have zero shares of and I've never had really any shares of, yeah. I'm happy to do it. So uh, we know. <laughs> All right, next trade here. Bryce Young and John U. Smith, who we just talked about, for Roma Dunze and a third round pick. That's a tough one just because of the value that quarterbacks get in super flex leagues. Um, but that being said, if you're really sold on a Dunze, I, I don't hate this trade. You think about it, essentially it's Janu for the third and a Dunze for Bryce Young. I'd say yeah. it's a fair trade. I don't have a problem with it. All right. I like the Dunze side. I definitely lean that way. And then, Mike, here's a straight-up swap. Chase Brown for Roma Dunze. I don't hate it. I see the value. If I'm competing, I want Chase Brown right now. Chase Brown is playing really well. He's put racking up the fantasy points. Um, yeah, this, this is clearly – a tale of teams going in two different directions, in my opinion. But I think it's fair. I would prefer Chase Brown right now. I agree. I would also prefer Chase Brown right now. I'm um, just on a blank team. But if you're rebuilding, I don't hate moving him for Rome. Um, if you're making this deal as a as a rebuilding team and you're moving Chase Brown away for Roma Dunze, you have the leverage to get at least a third round pick on top. Okay. Uh, I, I definitely think so. I agree. Let's talk about another running back. He's going to be waiver wire dynamite. Not in any of my leagues. He's already rostered. San Francisco 49ers running back Isaac Carendo. So with CMC and Jordan Mason out for the season, this guy's set to be the 49ers running back one. He's fast, by the way. Ran a 4-3-3 at the 24 NFL scouting combine, but he's also six foot, 221 pounds. So he's big and fast. Against Buffalo, a game in which the 49ers clearly did not want to play in. Um, four rushes, 19 yards, and a touchdown. One reception for negative three yards. Not a big sample size, but that is his most recent sample, so I had to give that to you. Uh, again, But he did have two games where he got some extended playing time. Played pretty well. Against the Cowboys on October 27th, 14 carries, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Four receptions for 13 yards. And against the Seahawks on October 10th, uh, 10 carries for 99 yards, no touchdowns there. In case you're wondering, he was a six-year college player, so this is likely going to be a short-term rental for you. I don't know what his future is after this, but if you're pushing, you need a running back, somebody wants to move him, let's see what it costs to get him. I saw multiple trades where he was traded for either a 27-second or a 25-second. Yeah, I think a second-round pick is what the going rate is. I actually sent an offer out um, just the other night. I sent two-thirds um, out. I, they wanted a second back. I get it. I don't know if I'm willing to pay a second. I haven't decided yet because you know that things just sitting there as I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't really want to pay a second. But also, you know, I think this guy's going to hit. So I think that's a fair value. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, with the 49ers offense, always get the, the backup, the next backup, because that's the guy that's going to be coming up next, which would be Israel Bonaconda. I believe they claimed off waivers. Um, here's one. Sam Laporta for Garendo in a 26 second. Give me Sam Laporta. Give me Sam Laporta. That's, that's silly. Uh, straight up trade. Trey Benson. Oh, man. I think you're going to take Isaac Garendo because as soon as he hits, you can get better than Trey Benson. Yeah, and it's one of those things where if you're pushing for championship, Garendo right now probably gives you a better chance. And I do have one more. Normally we do three, but I thought this one was pretty um, you know, pretty worth talking about. Tyler Algier in a 25 third for Isaac Garendo. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. All right, very good. Nate, you are just all about the wide receivers tonight, aren't you? Yes, so. What do you got for us next? All right, next up, somebody who's really disappointed us this year, and that is wide receiver for the Colts, Michael Pittman Jr. Mm. All right, uh, last year, Michael Pittman with Joe Flacco as the quarterback. Uh, we will have to you know, make sure we know that. But last year, Michael Pittman Jr. was wide receiver 13 on the year and averaged 15.6 points per game. Really good season. Now this year, so far through 13 weeks, wide receiver 46, only averaging 9.4 points per game. He's not even averaging double digits uh, per game, Mike, which is, as I said before, really disappointing. Um, he did just sign a three-year contract with the team before the season started, so he is on the team through the 2026 season. I will say, I looked at the contract, he's a super easy cut after the 2025 season if they want. Um, they would actually save $24 million dollars in cap space. They would only have $5 million of uh, dead cap and he has a $29 million uh, cap hit. So they would save a lot of money if they went ahead and cut him after the 2025 season. I think he'd have to be really poor for that to happen. I don't expect that to happen because I think Michael Pittman Jr. is a good wide receiver, 
But, hey, who knows? If Adonai Mitchell takes off, Josh Downs is looking incredible um, like he is, then it could happen. But looking at the stats so far, speaking of Josh Downs, Michael Pittman Jr. is 24th in targets with 79. Josh Downs is 26th in the league with targets with 78. So these guys are really wide receiver 1A and wide receiver 1B for the Colts. But the difference is Michael Pittman Jr. has only caught 46 of his uh, targets, while Josh Downs has caught 53 of his. Mm -hmm. So he has more catches. Uh, he has just made much of more of an impact on a game-by-game basis. Michael Pittman Jr. has dealt with some injury uh, this season. Maybe that's played a part. You know, he did have that back injury that they talked about putting him on IR, and then, like, the next day he was, you know, ready to go for the game. So I don't know. You know, maybe that back injury is playing through it. Maybe it's really – um, slowing him down. Of course, the development and roller coaster of that quarterback position has played the impact. So, what are we doing with him? What are the values? Let's take a look. Nick Chubb and a third round pick for Michael Pittman Jr. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that one's tough. Yeah. I probably would. I don't, I don't really like this trade. You don't really like this trade either way. You don't want any any of them. Yeah, I don't really like it. <laughs> I'm going to go with Michael Pittman Jr. side here. Um, Michael Pittman, uh, I do believe that at this point he is turning 27 or just turned 27. He ain't no young buck, at least. Right. Uh, he is 27. I just looked it up. He turned 27 in October. Um, so he's not super young, not very old yet. I do think um, he's going to end up turning it around. So I'll take Michael Pittman Jr. compared to Nick Chubb in a third round pick. Next straight here, Keenan Allen, straight up for Michael Pittman Jr. Yeah, I'm okay with that one. Yeah, I'm good with that one too. Get younger. I know Keenan Allen's had a couple good weeks here recently, but I, I don't think – I think he's on the tail end of his career for sure. And then, Mike, here we go. The second-round pick straight up for Michael Pittman Jr. I'm okay with that one as well. All right. Uh, I, if you're like an early second, I'm much more hesitant. But if you're a mid to late second, I'm good with this deal. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Now, let's talk about one last running back, and that is Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson Jr. He's not a free agent until after 25. He got another year. He's got a low base salary too, so I don't think he's in danger of being cut. That's $1.39 million. Eckler's also under contract until 26, which I did not know, but he is much more cuttable than Brian Robinson. Mm -hmm. is. He's on IR now. Maybe they decide to just part ways after the season. Uh, Chris Rodriguez, a guy that I would be putting in a waiver claim for as well, um, just because with Eckler out, I think he could get some more run. Versus the Titans, 16 carries, 103 yards, and a touchdown, one reception for six yards. Hasn't been used as much in the receiving game this year as in years past, but he can do it. So the, here's a cool stat. He has three 100-yard rushing games this year. He only had one previously in his entire career and Nate, that was November 27th 2022 and that was against the Atlanta Falcons when he had 18 carries 105 yards two receptions for 20 yards and a touchdown no rushing touchdowns there and despite missing three games this year two of those were for a hamstring injury one's for a knee injury he has 640 rushing yards he has a chance to top his career high of 797 set in 2022 he's already set a career high of rushing touchdowns with eight but his total touchdown, you know, career touchdown high, I butchered that one, is nine. In 2023, he had five rushing and four receptions. He's running back 26 on the season, 13.5 fantasy points per game. That's a really good running back, too, if you're good at wide receiver or a really good flex play on a weekly basis. What does it cost to get my man, Brian Robinson? Nate, let's talk about it. 225 seconds. You know, that seems a little on the higher end, but still within a reasonable range, um, especially for the running back position. Um, and I think Brian Robinson is going to be one of those players that with his style of play is going to have some life on his second contract. So I I'm good with two seconds. I, like I said, I think it's on the higher range. I, I'm not going to, I probably am not going to pay a first round pick for Brian Robinson. And know. for the, for the reason that I actually, it's funny, you mentioned it. Um, you know, you mentioned that he hasn't been getting the receiving work. Um, that you know he had last year and obviously a huge part of that is Austin Eckler being there right um, and also uh, Jaden Daniels you know we know that quarterbacks that use their legs more often don't throw to the running back as often as a pocket passer who's not as mobile so with that all into account I'm okay with two seconds um, but that's about the highest I go uh, when it comes to just straight up picks how about this one Keenan Allen for Brian Robinson and a 26 third absolutely I'll give the third and get Brian Robinson yeah <laughs> 
Uh, and last one, I saw two straight up trades, either CMC or Garrett Wilson. I don't know who traded Garrett Wilson for Brian Robinson. That was a terrible deal. I, I hope you're watching this so that you can make better trades in the future. Um, CMC, I am not fully on the demise, the career demise of CMC that I think some people are on. Right. I think he comes back next year. I mean, this this guy trains super hard. He's really aware of his body. Um, he'll come back from this. I'm not worried about this being career ending at all. Um, now it seems like it's probably season ending. So if you're a contending team, um, I'm okay with you moving CMC to go get Brian Robinson, but you probably should get something on top of it if you're making that trade.